Imagine creating your own TV show with just a text prompt. Welcome to the future of entertainment. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a brand new tool that allows you to do just that. So let's dive into how it works and the future of entertainment together. Showrunner AI created its own AI model that uses AI agents to create every part of a TV show. Now, these AI showrunner agents can write, produce, direct, cast, edit, voice, and animate episodes of a TV show. So let's take a look at an AI generated show and see if it's any good. This is Exit Valley. It's a cartoon satirical show that has a South Park esque style to it. The premise is that this is a satire on Silicon Valley and the entrepreneurial dreams that take place there. So let's premiere Exit Valley. Gather around, little ones. Tonight, I recount the legend of Silicon Valley, a distant land that once brimmed with human genius and folly, where tech titans and garage geniuses alike forged tools they believed would better the world. But amidst this innovation, a virus more potent than any computer could harbor spread unchecked. It was greed. So a couple of initial observations around the quality of this video. Firstly, the voice is slightly robotic, but it does have enough intonation to which it is believable enough to follow the concept. The AI generated music fits in well for the theme. And as for the visuals, we can see that it's really playing to the strengths of AI art right here. It's got a wonderful flat scene. All of the characters are rendered anatomically correctly. I would say perhaps the crossed legs of this robot do not seem to be entirely evident. And he does look like he's sitting ridiculously close to the fire. He might be melting his circuits there. He's literally got the flames going into his face. Colors and the composition are engaging and there is enough within this shot to make it a piece of content that you would want to see more of. If you're new here, I'm AI Samson. And on this channel, we talk about the latest developments in AI technology. So you can see that it's simply taking a flat image. It's applying a camera zoom into it and then selecting specific elements to add a sense of animation and immersiveness to. You can see that the main character has their face animated in sync with when they are talking. There are some subtle animations to the lights in his eyes. And it's really the fire and the sparks coming off of the fire that give this enough dynamism, immersiveness to make it a believable shot. So here we have switched from a wide angle shot of the scene to a close up of the character who is voicing the script. And what we can do here is we can actually pass out exactly how well they are creating consistent characters, which is an issue that has been prevalent since we first got our hands on AI tools. We're now starting to be able to get some pretty good consistent characters in AI art generation platforms, but transferring that to video is a real challenge. So we can look at both of these characters side by side and try to identify any areas where they are not consistent. And I can show you a few. This is a little bit like the old game of spot the difference that you might have played as a child. <laughs> but let me know if you see any that I miss in the comments too. So the first thing I notice is that the breastplate here on the left is covering less of the man's skeletal ribs than it is on the right. Next up, the markings on the forehead seem close, but not exactly the same as they are on the animation on the right hand side. I would also say that there looks like there's some extra detail added to the shoulders than there is on this version here. Apart from that, I think it's done a pretty good job at maintaining enough consistency in the character that it does not become jarring when we switch between shots. And I've really had to pause, put these next to each other to pass out any significant inconsistencies. Now, it's much easier to do this with animation because we are more forgiving in a illustrative approach than we would be if we were trying to create a realistic live action film. And that is still a little way off. So the story continues and it moves to a intro sequence, which is this. <laughs> And I'm particularly impressed with the text animations and the 
editing that matches perfectly in time to the music. There are also some subtle effects that really give this a sense of quality and professionalism that make it not look out of place in any real animated series. Yeah, these are particularly engaging, quirky, colorful, animated scenes. This is a very odd situation of these coffins being moved around these conveyor belts. But the text animation here is extremely visceral and of a high quality. And I have not seen any AI video generator or animation tool that is able to animate text effects to this quality. Now, the story continues to be set in a classroom where a woman asks the students about their opinion on Silicon Valley. And here it takes a, a lot of influence from South Park. Everything from the style of the animation all the way down to the vocal delivery of the characters. Silicon Valley. We're going to learn about the history of how a little valley became the tech mecca of the world. Hey, not another documentary about money-hungry tech nerds. Now, Silicon Valley wasn't just whipped up by some middle-class white guys in their garages playing... So, one thing to note about this example is that it pretty much only allows one character to be seen once and very rarely repeats those characters. So it creates highly episodic and fleeting interactions with each of the individuals who are focused in the video. And the founder of showrunner Saatchi has alluded to this being the strength of the tool at the moment, that it's more suited to episodic content rather than the epic 10 to 50 episode arcs of shows like Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones. Saatchi admits that today AI can't sustain a story beyond one episode. What AI is strongest at is deeply episodic shows with characters largely resetting every episode. Sitcoms, police procedurals, space exploration. Now, last year they also did create a entire AI simulated South Park episode using the same technology. And just take a look at how this came out. Let's just say a certain tech entrepreneur has been signing deals with some AAA actors. You don't mean. Yes, Elon Musk. Dang it, he's always one step ahead. Now, what's interesting about this is that if you were gazing at this or just watching a few seconds, I think it's incredibly hard to notice that this is an AI generated episode. It's only when you start to listen and hear that the quality of writing is subpar, that some of the details rendered on the faces of the characters are malformed and listening to the slight roboticism in the voices, can you recognize that this is an AI fake? So it's in that uncanny valley area of lifelikeness. Showrunner has shown 10 different styles of TV shows that you're going to be able to create inside their tool. Now these vary from the South Park style that we've just seen through to a more Futurama style, to an anime style, and even a style reminiscent of 3D Pixar animations. So this is Pixels, which is a cartoon show, a family, a comedy. And we can take a look at that. Hi there, Blue. Hello, Green. How did you know my name? I might have scanned your license plate and cross-referenced it with my online data logs. So it starts off with a slightly creepy opening of a rather shy and reclusive green male car trying to chat up a blue car. And he references the fact that he stalked her online via a database. So forgiving the slightly creepy content narrative, we can take a look at the visuals of this version. Firstly, it's playing again to the strengths of AI and it's generated a scene that is visual, engaging, and coherent. The only issues with it passing up to reality are that the text on the front of these buildings are rendered like gobbledygook. But the actual visuals are very reminiscent of the Pixar film Cars. So you can see that there is a desire for animated car content, especially seeing the number of sequels that Cars came out with. Now, they, once again, take a simple approach to animation where they're taking the same shot, they're applying a camera motion, slowly zooming into the characters, and then selecting specific parts of the image to animate. So here they've got the clouds separated and they're simply moving from right to left. We've got other cars and trams 
moving in front of the shot and they've animated the lips of these cars to synchronize with the voice acting. Now, another interesting application of how we might actually use this in a way that is meaningful and successful is to consider what is already successful with types of content that look like this. So there is this YouTube channel called Bleacher Report Football, and they create these highly stylized, simple animations that commentate on the drama of the soccer world, and they are extremely relevant and contextual. So here they have a video about the upcoming Champions League final, which is happening today, which is the premier competition for club teams in Europe, and they have the players who are interacting with each other, and they also merge this into a parody of, of House of Dragons. But if we just have a look at this. You don't even drive for shit. Why wait? There's a Champions League to be won. Uh, that doesn't belong to you. I told Dortmund. So they have extremely simple animations, and it is at the level where the content coming out of Showrunner would be able to match the quality of this content, which is already getting millions of views on YouTube. So the key here is actually the idea, the content, the subject, the, abil the ability to connect with an audience with a relevant piece of information. And if you do have an insight, an idea, or something that is capturing a interest culturally, then you could quickly create a piece of content using a tool like Showrunner and make something that is important, impactful, and relevant. And that's important because I believe that telling your story, telling a story, is a revolutionary act. That stories have shaped and built culture and humanity as we know it. And developing the skills, the insights, and the ability to tell compelling, comprehensive, and impactful stories has the power to change and evolve the world. And I'm very curious to know what type of story, what type of film, what type of TV show would you like to create most? What ideas do you have? And what would you most like to see? Do let me know in the comments. I, for one, would love to watch a TV show of myself, gallivanting about the universe, going on wonderful quests where I interact with strange aliens that teach me lessons and morals about life and the universe. But it would be quite fun to see myself in the TV shows. So there is currently a wait list that you can join. There are more than 50,000 people on the wait list. And you can easily sign up for that on the site. And now let's take a look at a another example. This is Ikuru Shinu, which is a horror anime. And what I like about this version is that it's in Japanese and it's subtitled, as well as the rain effects coming down. Now again, it's got a very original title sequence and text effects. And each one of these show a title sequence with some really beautiful animations applied to the text that really fit in with the theme and style of each of the shows. And the rain coming down on this anime effect is extremely engaging and immersive, and they work well cutting between a close-up and a wide angle of these two characters conversing. And what we leave behind is a family drama show that looks like this. Okay, just a few more lines of code. Jake, I'm scared. What if she doesn't remember us? Or what if she's different? Remember how mad she was when we spilled juice on her work laptop right before her VC pitch? And again, it's utilizing the effect of taking a static shot, applying a camera motion effect, and animating subtle parts of the image. Now, it's enough to get you engaged with a video, but it does become slightly repetitive. But what is particularly interesting here about this tool is that AI technology is evolving rapidly in separate content media types. But actually taking these together and combining them in an innovative way is something that we're going to see more and more of. So what is the impact of this on the established filmmaking industry, on the established companies of TV? Well, I believe it's going to continue a theme of democratizing content creation. Last year, we saw the launch of Barbie and Oppenheimer, which was a special occasion in cinema, and both films grossed huge amounts at the box office. But I think that marks the last note in an era of big blockbuster cinematic movies. And we're going to be moving much more to democratized pieces of content made on much lower budgets with much smaller individual audiences. But actually, these pieces of content are much more specific and targeted for their audience. I believe that one of the issues with 
large budget films is that they try to appeal to such a broad audience they become extremely formulaic and cliche but now we're getting the opportunity to create the most specific types of content for each individual viewing experience and there was also another tool that came out this year that demonstrated the ability to edit entire films in different ways every time you watch it the music documentary Eno has 52 quintillion different versions. And essentially, every time somebody watches it, the AI re-edits the footage in a new way to change the viewing experience. So we're going to see a rise of, of smaller production pieces of content. And that maps out very accurately to the explosion of YouTube content that we've seen over the last decade, empowering everyone to tell their story. And the fact is, is that you don't need an audience of millions and millions to number one, have an impact on people, and number two, to even make a living. And so that's why I think it's incredibly exciting for people who want to tell stories, who want to be creatives, who want to enjoy the fruits of this evolving technological revolution. And if you're interested in that, I'm developing a specific AI academy for developing your own films. And if you'd like to be a beta tester for that, you can email me at samsonvols at gmail.com with the subject line beta and I will add you to the group. So I believe that creating stories have been the fundamental architecture of allowing humans to accomplish what we have done. It is the narrative of morality, of money, of commerce, of business that has allowed us to organize ourselves in these complex societal structures. And now changing the very fabric of the way that we tell stories is going to advance the speed at which we can create compelling narratives that have the power to capture people's imaginations. There is this wonderful story about two fish. There is one fish swimming and he asks the other fish. He says, how's the water? And the other fish says, what's water? And what I love about this little parable is that the thing that surrounds us most deeply is the thing that is hardest to see. And for me, I believe that is stories, that we are living inside of stories, that we are surrounded by stories, that society conceptually is a story, and that this fundamental potential of AI is to tell more compelling stories more quickly and more easily. So I, for one, am excited about the development of AI. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for being here. And most of all, I wish you a delightful day.